Good afternoon and welcome into Mary's Kitchen. Thank you girls for those who joined me in Mary's Boot Camp earlier, uh, making that decadent chocolate cake, which I absolutely make no apologies for. Not the kind of thing I normally eat, but however, uh, had a little bit of uh, short crust sweet pastry left over from yesterday making lemon tart. Hi Marjorie, how are you? And Kathy, nice to see you, Kathy. Um, anyway, uh, I just want to show you, Kathy, you'll be interested in this, of course. This is how it turned out. Absolutely glossy as glossy can be. I put some uh, lovely chopped hazelnuts on top of there. And I certainly don't make any excuses for eating this later. Oh boy, I can hardly wait. I have not had a chocolate tart forever for a long, long time. So hi, Lori Jo. Hi again, Lori. So that's the chocolate tart, how it finished. Okay, this is a once in a lifetime treat. Okay, not once in a lifetime, but a little more than once in a lifetime. But anyway, I am so delighted with that. It's so glossy and so shiny. I can actually see my face. Who's on here? Oh, somebody just sent me some stars. How nice. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about those stars, girls. You can send stars while I'm videoing, but I want to find out something special to do with them. Uh, some kind of uh, something for charity or something like that. But what I did earlier, if you look, if you get your Mary's Kitchen cookbook, and if you don't have the recipe, I can always send it to you. Made the pastry earlier, the short crust pastry, which is on page 66. And now we're going to make the spinach feta cheese and cherry tomato. Now the girls that are on Mary's Kitchen Boot Camp, this is gonna be your challenge until January 20th. So I'm expecting to see a lot of pictures of beautifully presented spinach, feta cheese, and tomato tart. Now, you don't just have to add spinach to this. You could add asparagus to it. You could add green beans to it. What I would say if you were adding something like a green bean, give them a blanch first for maybe three to four minutes. All right, just soften them up. Uh, just before you put them in the pie. Um, same with uh, the asparagus. Asparagus tends to cook in the oven quite quickly, so it'll cook along with your eggs and everything, so you don't need to blanch that. But I prefer to use spinach, and I'm using a baby leaf spinach today. So I'll just say hello, see who's on. Elizabeth, how are you? I hope uh, Maureen's doing fine. Monica? Monica, yes, I did, but this isn't a sweet one. And Monica, look what I did with the other half of the pastry. From the lemon. The lemon tart is vamoosed. Gone. It was so yesterday. Finished. <laughs> this is what I made today. Monica, I have to give you the recipe for this. Norman is going to pass out when you give him a piece of this. This is a chocolate tart. And uh, Monica made the lemon tart with me yesterday, which was wonderful. We had a lot of fun. Absolutely fabulous. And then she gave, I think, she was sensible. She gave a few pieces of her tart away to her neighbors. <laughs> Mine got eaten. Um, so anyway, we're going to make, I've made this one. Uh, this, where's my cloth? It just came out of the oven. So, and I did glaze this one, Monica. I did put a little egg wash on that one. So uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, it just depends. The chocolate one, I did put a little egg glaze on there as well. So I'm just going to move my shell over here, all right? Just to give me a little bit more room for working. And I'm going to start with two ounces of butter in my frying pan. Now, Monica, I don't know if you were on the Mary's Kitchen Boot Camp earlier, but this is in the next challenge to make a lovely tart and present it on Mary's Kitchen Boot Camp. If, none of, if some of you aren't members over there, make sure you send a member request, and, uh, which I will accept and uh, then you can be part of the fun over there. It's a little bit different. We do competitions and various things and people posting lots of different kinds of recipes and lots of different kinds of lives. So hi, Jean. Aileen, nice to see you. Thanks for coming on. Did you like those photographs I sent you earlier? Hey, Nancy, hi, and Julie. Oh, good. <laughs> so anyways, Monica, good. Well done. Well, we're going to do that cooking again. So I was just saying to the girls, I don't know, we're going to, I'm going to start doing some recipes from the I Love Soup 
my recent ebook. So if anybody's interested in purchasing that, that's $7.99. It's in the form of an ebook, which you can easily print out yourself or just keep it on your phone as a download. It's terrific. Uh, 50 recipes, all with fully illustrated photographs. Um, and uh, so we're going to start cooking from that over in Mary's Kitchen Boot Camp, doing regular recipes from that. So I'm going to put two ounces of butter in here. I've got about an ounce here. So I'm just scrounging through my fridge, finding what I have left over. So I'm not doing doubles or having half things open and half things not. So just give me a second here. Take another bit of butter, about an ounce. So it's about two ounces of butter in there, which is what the recipe calls for. Let me just fold that up. Give my hands a little wipe. So I hope you enjoyed that chocolate tart earlier. It was great fun to make. Hi, Linda. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Aileen, you have no sound. I don't know. Uh, go on the side of your phone and maybe give it a couple of clicks. You maybe turned it off. Or go on to your settings and see what your sound's doing. Happy New Year, Julia. Happy New Year. Ah, great. Um, so we don't want this too high. I'm going to turn that right down. And I've got one large onion chopped. Now use red onion or uh, white onion, whichever one you want. I love onion. And put that in your pan. If you want to use red onion, it gives you some really, really nice color in your heart. We're just going to saute those for a little bit. I'm going to get those nice and soft. Just break them apart a wee bit. And then I'm going to put the lid on until they are a little bit translucent because that's what we want. So it's been a little bit of fun. Mary's Kitchen's been uh, hot off the press today. Everything's been cooking and last night as well, making fresh pastry. Hey, Linda. Hey, Deborah. how are you? Oh, you watched yesterday's. Well, yesterday I made, uh, we made a short, uh, in fact, Monica cooked with me the whole time. We made, we did the whole thing live from start to finish. Uh, we made a short uh, crust pastry, a sweet short crust pastry. The only difference between that and short crust is it's got some castor sugar in it. Uh, some recipes put two tablespoons. I only put one tablespoon. I just want a little sweetness in it, not too much, not to overkill. Hey, Lucas, how are you? Lucas is my manager in my guest house, and he's a very good cook or learning to be one after watching his Auntie Mary several times here on live. Hi, Cheryl. Watching with your book in hand. Cheryl, what a great idea. So you'll see right now, I've got, I'm preheating my oven over there to 190, my little oven. Um, I've melted the butter in the large deep frying pan with the lid on. I've added the chopped onion and sauteing it gently. And then once that's sauteed for about five minutes or so, I'm going to add my spinach. And I'm just going to allow my spinach to sweat for five minutes. I don't want to take the color out of it. I want the vibrant, vibrant green in the spinach. I'm going to then season it with some sea salt and some pepper. Um, drain off any excess butter. Mm, that's a step I usually miss out. <laughs> I usually just uh, keep the butter in there. Um, I place the spinach mi mixture then into the prepared case so we'll just read from there at the moment uh, we won't carry on too much more there reading it uh, i've got some feta cheese here because of four ounces of feta cheese and also i'm going to put these little mushrooms i just happen to have some extra ones left over and i'm going to put them in there as well uh just pick that up a wee bit yeah yeah i forgot i had i cut up a few mushrooms there if you have some mushrooms you can put them in Basically, again, it's a little bit of imagination you want to use here. So let's just keep sauteing those down a wee bit. Cook those mushrooms now. Good. Behave yourself in there. All right, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put four eggs in my mixing bowl here. Four eggs. i got large eggs. So I'm using large ones. Oops. 
I actually came out of the supermarket today and dropped six eggs in the car park. <laughs> I was so anxious to get all my groceries in my in my car and I pack my car, I pack my groceries when I get to my car, not inside the supermarket because I'm just in and out of there. We're still in national lockdown here. So this has been kind of fun for me, cooking for you all while we're during national lockdown because it's kind of nice to be able to do something different and learn something, that's for sure. So I'm going to put a little pepper in there. Now in the recipe, it doesn't say tarragon, but I put a little bit of tarragon in mine. Um, it's an acquired taste tarragon, so I, I didn't include it in the recipe because sometimes people don't like it. It's very, oh, what does it smell like? Tarragon. <laughs> so I put a little bit of tarragon in there because I do like the taste of that. Just a little bit, not too much, just a couple of sprinkles, okay? You don't want to get carried away. I need my little beater, so I'm going to give my eggs a little beat. Oops, spilled some there. Hang on. Don't like spilling. There we go. Give them a good old beat. Get lots of air in them. Can you see lots of bubbles coming into them? See? That's your air going into your eggs, which is lovely when you're cooking desserts and stuff. You need lots of air into your food. Let me just see how this is going. Beautiful. Gorgeous. nicely translucent now and the mushrooms are all cooked already so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my bag of baby meat spinach all right and the measurement of that just so you know is 180 it doesn't matter if it's 200 it doesn't matter if it's 250 okay I'm gonna put my spinach in there to sweat the whole bag oh that one leaf there I thought he was gonna get away onions on top of the spinach a little bit and just let that sweat for a few minutes. Make sure it's not too high. Just want a nice heat in there. Okay, I'm going to put 10 ounces of cream in with my four eggs. I hope you girls are all learning something here cooking with me. Hi there, Karen and Brandy. Hi, and Janice and Mint. Every time I see your name, I want a cocktail. <laughs> it's 10 ounces of uh, cream in there. Very good. Mix that well. This is really easy, this recipe, okay? Even going right down to the pastry. The pastry is so easy. When you make pastry, if you want two open shells, it's basically, okay, my recipe calls for 2.5, which is about 5 ounces, but you can do uh, 2 to 1. So you can do uh, 4 ounces to 2 ounces. 4 ounces of flour to 2 ounces of fat. 8 ounces of flour to 4 ounces of fat. Okay, that's usually your ratio. You can add a little bit more fat if you want, which I do generally. I add a little bit more butter or margarine. You can use cooking. You can use lard. Okay, so that's all mixed up now. Let's just check what we're doing here. As you can see, what's for supper tonight? What's cooking with Mary? Spinach tart. I don't want this to overcook too much. I just want it to steam down a little bit. I don't even care if some of it's still not properly cooked, especially the spinach. Because the more it's going to cook in the egg, so simply. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. I can tell already. I'm looking forward to this. It's my supper tonight with some little tiny baby new boils and a little salad. That's what I'm going to have for tonight. My little cherry tomatoes. I buy them on the vine. They're really, really sweet. They're lovely. And I'm going to cut up quite a few of those. I'll save a few for later for cheese and crackers. I like a little cheese and cheese. I like a little cheese on my my uh, cracked black pepper revitas for a little snack sometimes. Not the cherry. Not the chocolate pie. 
not the chocolate pie for the snack. Oh dear, that's dangerous. Danger zone. Anyway, never mind. Celebrate sometimes, right? So I'm just going to cut like probably about a dozen cherry tomatoes. And I like lots of color in this dish. Oops, lost one. I like lots of color. I'm going to leave a couple of those cherries there. Lost one. Missing a man, missing an action. Give him a little wipe. And just half your uh, cherry tomatoes. We're going to place them on our tart when we're ready. And then we've got about four ounces of feta cheese to sprinkle. I bought a little brick of feta cheese and I'm going to put the other part of the feta cheese on the salad. Hello there, Helen and Kathy, Patricia, Lisa, Lisa Johnson, nice to see you. Um, listen, if any of you girls are not yet members of Mary's Kitchen Boot Camp, just put it in the search on your Facebook and come over and join. Hi, Sharon, Tama. We have lots of little competitions over there. What is double cream? Double cream is heavy cream. Okay? In America, heavy cream. All right? It's almost like a whipping cream, but it's your kind of next one down for you get a single cream which is very very watery. You've got a next one up which this can be whipped. It's called double cream, which is your heavy cream, okay? There you go. Just ask the questions because sometimes we have different terminology here in the UK. Hi, Marcy. Carolyn, how are you? Patricia? Not really. It's not a Greek dish, Patricia. This is uh, really being made in a tart. But I guess the same ingredients could be put in, into that Greek dish. Okay, I'm happy with that. Just to show you how green and beautiful that is. Smell vision. How's that? Beautiful. I'm going to put a little bit of pepper in there more. And I'm going to put a little bit more sea salt. Because I don't think I put them in there at the beginning. And I'm going to bring my little tart over here. My little cooked flan. My pastry case. And because I put mushrooms in, it soaked up most of the butter anyway. So there isn't any excess. Don't, don't make your pastry base too watery. If there is a lot of excess butter and stuff, there shouldn't be. There's none in here at all. And that's the thing about putting a couple of mushrooms in. Mushrooms soak up the, the uh, butter. You could even cook it in a little bit of butter and a little bit of olive oil. It doesn't have to be all butter. That's my, my version of it. So I'm just going to spread that. As you can see how beautiful it looks already. And how simple is that? Get some of the mushrooms and yeah, just even that up a wee bit. I think I will put a little bit more pepper too. I like pepper. There we go. Right. Isn't that beautiful so far? Can you see that okay? Let's see. There, can you see that all right? Isn't that stunning so far? That's just... This is going to be a beautiful supper tonight. I'm looking forward to it, along with my chocolate tart. <laughs> so here we go. Let's just pour that all on there. It'll find its way. I don't want it to go over. So let it find its way down into the grooves. There we go. Okay, so... Now, we got our feta tart, our feta cheese, I mean, sorry, and just crumble it with your fingers, all right, just like so. So you'll need a little cloth on hand to wipe your hands, and when this comes out of the oven, you're going to be amazed. I'll, I'll post a picture after it comes out of the oven, okay, because I'm not going to keep you on here for 20, another 25 minutes. Uh, until this is ready and then I'll post a photograph like I did with my chocolate tart. That chocolate tart came so out so glossy you can see yourself in it. There we go. So it doesn't matter four ounces, six ounces. If you like feta, if you like goat's cheese, put that on. Have a little cloth here to wipe your hands. Always okay. There we go. And now 
Can you see that okay? Good. I'm going to place my tomatoes just in some sort of fashion. I love the combination of this. Tomatoes, spinach, feta. Gorgeous. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil some baby uh, potatoes with this. Lovely baby salad potatoes. And uh, a lovely mixed salad. Push that one in too far. Absolutely perfect. So once you're I'm going to pull a little bit of the spinach up so we can see it. Anyway, it'll show up. It'll come rise to the top once it's uh, whoop, a couple more tomatoes there. There we go. How simple was that? I constructed that in less than 15 minutes. So there you go. That is your spinach and feta tart. We're going to put that in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. You're going to watch it. You don't want it to go too brown. You want it to have a really, really nice color. And just check for the wobble, that it doesn't wobble too much. All right. So there you go. That's your spinach, uh, feta, and cherry tomato tart. And I hope you get an opportunity to make it. And I hope that also you'll make your own pastry as well. Pastry is on page 66 in Mary's Kitchen Cookbook. And the recipe for the spinach and feta tart is on page 64. If you're going to go into the competition in Mary's Kitchen Boot Camp uh, and you don't have the recipe, just let me know. In fact, I think it's on my website, uh, www.maryjoancalder.com. So you'll find it there. All right, girls, thank you very much. If you haven't got a copy of your Mary's Kitchen I Love Soup yet, don't forget, all I need is your email address, and it's $7.99 US, £5.99 UK. Very reasonable, just an ebook. All you need to do is you can either download it, and it's fully illustrated with photographs for every single soup. All right, thanks for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. It's been busy in the kitchen today. I'll post a picture of this later on. I'm very, very pleased with it. Very happy with it. And I hope you have a great day. And remember, if you see someone without a smile, give them yours. Thanks for coming on, girls. Lots of love. Bye. Not shutting off.